You all right? Huh? Do you know when you, you're ready for this and you feel as though you're prepared? Yeah. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> Dragon's Den, Britain's most intense elevator pitch, in which aspiring entrepreneurs go head to head with five deal hungry multi millionaires. Peter Jones. I love this job. Titan of tech and the den's longest serving dragon. You need to take a deep breath. I know, I'm literally shaking. Deborah Meaden, the sustainability champion who puts her money where her mouth is. Sadly, that money is staying right where it is. Tuka Suleiman, a fashion industry maverick <laughs> who's never afraid to take a punt. I have to be passionate. That's fascinating. Zara Davies. I want to eat your face. The queen of crafts. Look at this way, Stephen. Who tells it exactly as it is. I'm just trying to cut through the BS and get it straight. Thank you. And Stephen Bartlett. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Social media mogul. He's the baby of the bunch. And bringer of fresh fire. Have you got anything nice to say, Tuka? No. Tonight. Oh, my goodness. It's absolutely surreal to see you guys. How are you feeling? Battered. You're just chucking words out there. Why are you walking like that? That's what they do on them catwalks. You're definitely the best-looking dragon on a cake, Tuka. How does he taste? You don't taste so good. Peter, upstairs, put your kilt on. I beg your pardon? You're bringing a spud gun to a nuclear war here. It'll be the best decision you ever made. Welcome to Dragon's Den. Hundreds of nervous entrepreneurs have stood in exactly this spot, hoping to deliver the pitch of a lifetime. But fewer have walked out with the backing of a dragon. First into the den is Michael Horsfall from Leeds, with a business born from bitter experience. So I'm a heating engineer by trade, and I was getting regular copper pipe theft from just outside my own front door. So I know firsthand how devastating van crime can be. The alarm will go off any second now. <laughs> Michael's hoping his product can make enough noise to alert the dragons to an opportunity. Today, we're bringing in an innovative design product to help protect the fabric of a van from criminal damage, and I hope the dragons are going to love it. So can this van man drive off with a deal? Hello, Dragons. My name's Michael Horsfall, and I'm here today to try to raise uh, £45,000 for a 10% share in my business. Currently in the UK, there are 4.2 million vans that are registered on the roads. With this figure, though, it also brings with it some sinister statistics. On average, there are 28,000 reported cases of van crime thefts from vehicles, tools and assets reported each year. I suffered a spate of van crime incidents that actually changed the course of my life. What I realised was that factory-fitted van alarms are designed to go off after the doors open, which is too late. This is why I developed Vanguardian, the preemptive early warning alarm system. It activates on contact to protect the vulnerable, commonly targeted at-risk zones on and around a van. We've sold up uh, nearly 500 units since we went live. So if I'll just alarm our product, if I now try to come to the vehicle and instigate the first thing of door tampering, our alarm lets off a two-second beep. If that is ignored and the perpetrator goes into it again, it will then activate continuously for 30 seconds, drawing attention to the criminal activity around the vehicle. Now, bearing in mind that 62% of criminal activity is, is undertaken uh, from outside the home, you become your own security guard, effectively. Now, I'm not saying you come charging out of your house to protect your van. Simply putting a light on and alerting to somebody that you're, that you're actually aware of it can be all the deterrent that it needs. An early warning alarm system designed to protect both vans and their contents from theft is the brainchild of Michael Horsfall. Come on, have a look. Now, you can take the cover off, Peter. That's designed to come on. And then it's just... Yeah. It's Velcroed. No, it's no, stuck on. No, it's glued on. That's glued with the 3M adhesive. Michael is seeking £45,000 in return for a 10% share in his company. Would you like me to set the alarm? Because the alarm goes off if you touch it. Yeah, set the alarm. <laughs> if 
you tap anywhere on the van, it'll go off. The ethos behind his invention already appears to have struck a chord with Tuka Suleiman. I'm a great believer in prevention's better than cure. Absolutely. So what I want to know is what have you got unique to your business yep. that makes you different to other alarms? So in our pattern, we've developed um, a base with a 3M eye-bond contact adhesive tape. The 3M adhesive tape is all that's needed to attach the base to the vehicle. You just mentioned IP. Yes. So what is your IP and show us exactly what you mean by your IP. Uh, um, sorry, just elaborate. You said that you have you have an IP patent. A pa patent. Yeah. yeah the... You said you have a patent. So uh, the pattern that we've got starts with the base. So building up the foundations from the base, from the attachment to the vehicle, was fundamental sorry, towards sorry, getting sorry, a patent. Sorry, you're, you're losing me. So you said you have a you have a patent on this. I do have a patent. So what is the patent that you have on it? So the subtlety of our patent to get a product like this to market was the foundation of the base. So that base must be flexible to follow the convex version of a back door. Right. So we've got 3M tape to, to create that. We've also instigated the possibility of powerful magnets. Mike, you haven't told me what your patent is. What have you got a pattern on? I think he's trying to tell you. I think it's the oh. glue on the convex shape. Oh, is it? Is it the well, glue? It's the, it's, oh, sorry. It, no, it's the... We have a pattern for the base that's flexible, so our pattern covers the flex of a base to attach to a convex area on the exterior of a vehicle. Michael's failure to clearly explain his product's protection has flummoxed the dragons and left Peter Jones wondering whether his invention is really an improvement on what's already available. I've got a lot of vans in our supply chain business and they're all alarmed. And the alarm will go off. When you open that door, the alarm goes off. Yeah, but they're already in there, Peter, and we're trying well, to keep no, them on the outside. Well, the minute they are in, the alarm will go off. So but it's, it's too late, Peter, the damage is done. Well, that, it, it's probably too late as well with this because if I was going to break into there, I'd be in there in seconds. The alarm would still go off, so I'm going to... No, I'm... Peter, I, I'm, I'm sorry, that's not the case. Why? Because, well, well, because we're door peeling and cutting panels all, all out, it doesn't activate the door, it doesn't activate a factory-fitted alarm. You have to open the door. Yeah, but uh, if I'm going to steal something from the thing, I need the door open, don't I? No. Well, how am I going to get something out that because I want to get to You've not obviously steal. come across door peeling, where they actually bend the door down and it doesn't activate the alarm. You can also have tamper alarms inside vans if I want to... If they're fitted. If well, they're fitted. Of course. And they're wired. But that's your option. I'm offering a, a, an off-the-shelf, fit-it-yourself option for anybody on a limited budget. Our product, back door, side door, is £145. Michael is standing his ground, despite Peter Jones's concerns about the efficacy of his product. Now, Deborah Meaden wants to drill down into the details of the business. So you talked about you've sold 500 since you started. When yes. did you start? So in earnest, we start saying earnest because we've been doing this since 2019. And so with that period, bearing in mind, we ended up in a COVID pandemic. Couldn't have come at a worse time because at that time I had visions of looking at retailers and trying to get into retailers into that market and uh, and seeing if that was going to be. Viable. So since 2019, you've done 500 sales, but within that there was a lockdown period, so you you were restricted on what you could do. So what I did then, uh, Deborah, to to compensate for what was going on with the pandemic was to look at online and deciding to set up a website where we could do online sales. Okay, and where else are you selling them? We went into retailers and asked them if they were interested in stocking this product. I'm saying five, six, seven local retailers in the Leeds area. Um, I offered them a 20% margin uh, to introduce the product. And tell me your best... I cut across you only because you do have a habit of spreading the question into yeah. other areas. So tell me your best retailer and how many they have sold. So... One of the problems we found with retailers... No, your best retailer, <laughs> your, it's, it's a name, and they have sold this many. Our best retailer uh, would be, let's have a think, um, an ironmonger's that we supply um, in Armley. How many have they sold? Currently, they'll have sold £2,800 worth of units. 
how much do they cost you to make? So the dual alarm is £32 and the, the other one is £22. So for an individual unit, how much do you sell that for? That's £100. OK, this one? Bought it singularly £55, but we sell it as a twin set. So what is £145, which is what? That combination. Because we have a flexible system, when people invest in our product and buy more than one unit, I reward them with 10% discount. So we kind of want to encourage them to spend more money and buy more units. So if they get the dual alarm and a yeah, single but this alarm... Is sta this is standard business stuff. It is. All you need to describe is we sell it in bundles. Yeah, you we sell it in bundles. You get a bundle that sells £145 and it costs us £54 to make. But we have we different you can bundle buy them packages. Just talk, just describe that. But in all of your words, you lose the key points Right. about this business and this is really concerning for an investor right because um, trying to get to the bottom of what is a really simple and quite small business at the moment yes and I've presented this today to captains of industry to try and guide me in the right direction and maybe you know show me the, the, the sort of way forward with this Michael takes a firm stand on his need for a dragon but has Stephen Bartlett heard anything which could prompt him to invest? Michael, I think I actually, do you know what? I really, I really applaud you for creating this product because I've seen over and over again the heartbreak yes. and how life shattering it can Absolutely. be for people when they have their van broken into. Yeah. So I think you know, any effort you've made to try and solve that problem is to be commended. Thank you. However, I ask myself, why didn't he have that? determination and that, that ruthless dogged ambition to sell more units. No, that's a very good point. And I can answer that because I'm also a plumbing and heating engineer. Okay. I've been doing my trade for 35 years. And so I've, this is a side project it's, to you? It's effectively what a side project. I don't know if I want to invest in your side project. No, it's not a side project no more. We're now <laughs> creating a business. Because the, we've reached that point now where I've invested in my time and can see the potential of this product that we need to give it 100%. I'm going to tell you where I am. There's no evidence here for me that you've demonstrated the tenacity that's required to make this a really, really big business. So with that said, and because I feel like the burden of work would be so great on me versus the return I would get, I'm going to say that I'm out. But I wish you the very, very best. A setback for Michael, who has lost his first dragon. The entrepreneur has already gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Peter Jones, but has he persuaded him his offering has legs? Mike, I think that this is not a must-have product. This is a nice-to-have. This is what I would class as a very small market within a small market, which is a considered purchase for those that want a tamper-proof alarm system. I, I disagree, obviously, um, but I do value your opinion. I'm really sorry, as much as you might not want to yeah. hear this, because a lot of inventors don't, Yeah. I think you will sell quite a few, but I don't think that this is the answer to people breaking into vans. And for that reason, I'm sorry, but I'm out. I don't think the market is as big as you probably think it is, but I agree with Peter, you're going to sell enough to make a good business. My problem is that you can't tell us really straight and simple questions without just chucking words out there. And, I, and I'm, I'm really sorry, Michael, but that, that shows me a life invested in you yeah. of spending way too much time trying to actually understand what you're trying to do or, or unpick the real drivers of the business right. and not enough time saying, OK, I get it. So I won't be investing. All right, thank you, Deborah. I'm out. Michael, I actually think the product's really lovely. Thank you. We have a lot of vans in our business. I understand the problem you're selling. And when you stand in front of me and explain it to me, I think, yep, I might buy one of these. Yeah. My problem is I've got no real understanding of how you're going to turn my investment into a greater return for me. So I'm going to wish you all the best and say that I'm out, but I look forward to watching your journey from afar. Right. Three more cold shoulders for the heating engineer turned entrepreneur. And four dragons have now bowed out. Only Tuka Suleiman is yet to deliver his verdict. Michael. Tuka. How are you feeling? 
battered. <laughs> Look, I, I did say to you earlier on, I'm a great believer that prevention is better than cure. Yeah. And you have something. But I don't believe that this is an investment that I can make any return on my investment at all in the short term. So for that reason, I'm going to say good luck, but I'm out. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sadly for Michael, he must leave with nothing. The Dragons may have blown out his hopes of investment, but failure in the den hasn't left him too deflated. It was a disappointing result, but a great experience. What else can I say? Onwards and upwards. Our next entrepreneur loves to travel and was living in LA when she decided to follow her dream of starting a fashion business. Moro Luke is now back in the UK and the next stop on her entrepreneurial voyage, The Den. This is surreal. It's an amazing part of my journey, but I am obviously nervous, you know what I mean? I think I'm gonna get scorched a little bit, so we shall see what happens, it should be interesting. <laughs> Moray draws creative inspiration from the ocean. I was born in a seaside town called Pukko, and nothing beats the sea. I mean, who wouldn't want to be a mermaid? They have incredible hair. But when it comes to the world of commerce, she's on choppy waters. I'm a fashion designer, I'm not a business lady. The frappuccinos don't pay for themselves, so I definitely need to learn. Shanghai Dragons, oh my goodness, it's absolutely surreal to see you guys. My name is Moray Luke, and I want to present my responsible fashion business. Whew, sorry guys, I'm very, very nervous. You're doing well. <laughs> Breathe. Take a deep breath. Growing up in my sleepy Welsh seaside town, I had two main priorities. One of the biggest priorities was reading Hans Christian Andersen by the Ocean, and the second biggest priority was rushing home from school to see the latest fashion collections and dreaming about how I would, well, put my aesthetic within these. Now, as an adult, the world is so depressing. <laughs> There's a once in a lifetime climate event every two weeks and what's, you know, what's gonna happen to the world? When I discovered fish leather, I thought it was the most perfect material I had ever seen. There is 618 million pounds Scottish salmon industry and there's plenty of wastage in that industry. So I thought, well, if I can make that wastage into an air room, then at least I'm doing something in the right direction, you know? So anyway, let's talk about my timelines because my story is kind of crazy. I was in Venice Beach and I met an actress and her mother and they told me, well, I didn't think people started fashion houses when they were 25 years old. I just didn't, I just didn't think that was possible. So I had all these sketches on my iPad and they came across these sketches, you know, and they said, if you don't do this for a living, then we will harass you every day. And then they did. But the problem is, I'm kind of a free spirit. I'm not allowed to tell you guys that, but I'm definitely a designer, not a business lady. And realistically, I haven't got that many retailers yet, but I do have big dreams. Mm -hmm. And I need a co-pilot to help me pilot that. Anyway, I would love you guys to check out your products. Thank you so much. Marie, what would be really great is, could you tell us how much money are you looking for today? I, oh, I'm sorry, I missed that and part out. That's the most important part. 30,000 pounds for 20% of my business. A selection of designer handbags made from fish skin are the offering from Moray Luke. Wow, you look good. Why are you walking stuff like that? That's what they do on them catwalks. Who is seeking £30,000 in return for a 20% share in her sustainable accessories business. No, it's not that way. The way when you're on the catwalk, you've got to do this. One foot in front of the other. <laughs> 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 I stand corrected. <laughs> Good grief. A runway rundown from fashion high flyer to Suleiman. But can Moray's fledgling enterprise truly take off? Peter Jones is first to find out. So let's talk about your product. I think it looks very, very good. Thank and in you. fact, the colour. The, the green is, the green is really, for. really different, isn't it? To be honest, over lockdown, I was making a lot of guacamole, and I think that's where my love of green came. Have you launched this? I have just launched it in November. OK. And how many have you made? I've just recently made 30 of them. And where do you make it? 
These are the prototypes and they're made in Greenwich, but uh, the new bags that I will be selling are going to be made in uh, Yeovil. What would be the price of one of those bags? 595. And what do they cost to make? They cost, so the old prototypes are 184 50 and then the new uh, the new stock is going to be 140. How many have you sold? Two. Two bags. So not many, sorry guys, I'm not a millionaire yet. Marie, I have been in this business. I'm, I'm... And I know it quite well. Mm -hmm. And and I must say, for a UK made bag, okay. good quality. Oh. <laughs> name me a shop or a store that you think your bags are selling. Fortnum and Mason has always been my dream. Selfridges is another one, but also little, you know, little boutiques and even cruise ships and stuff like that. I mean, what you need is Kim Kardashian to carry one of your bags. What, you mean me and Deborah carrying them? Isn't going to cut it? The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> that miracle moment is what you need for this brand. I could help you and make this work. But... I'm going to let my other dragons give you the view and I'll decide. A pause for thought from Tuka Suleiman. Now, Sarah Davies wants to build a fuller picture of this self-confessed business novice's finances. So what have you invested in the business to date? I've had a bounce back loan. Yeah, and then I had savings then. Um, and how much in savings? I think something like 10,000 to make my first prototypes. And, and so you're sitting on stock at the moment, you've got 30 bags I have, already yes. made, yeah. ready to go. And that's, do you want to hear the assets of that? Oh, that there's 20,825. 20, so so you've got, you're sitting on 20 grand worth of assets. Yeah. Brilliant. Do you have any of your bounce back or any of your cash left in the bank? Yeah, still? I do. Not much, but I do have it, yeah. So can I just um, focus you on your assets? OK. I think you're taking 30 bags by 600 pounds. 595, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so actually your assets are not that. Oh, OK. Your assets are 30 bags times how much it costs you okay. to make them. You've got to look at a realistic value okay. of the action, because until you've sold it, that doesn't have it's the value, not worth yes. 600 pounds. OK. But it is worth the 150 pound it costs you to make it. OK. OK? OK, sure, yeah. The fledgling entrepreneur is given a more realistic appraisal of her business's assets by a pragmatic Deborah Meaden. Stephen Bartlett already counts an accessories business amongst his den deals, so is he gearing up to add another? First of all, I just want to say I think the bags are really beautiful. Oh, I... You know, they really are. However, I'm just not sure you're at a stage where... Investment. An investment would be actually, like, a helpful thing for mm -hmm. you. Cos it is a timing issue, raising investment as an entrepreneur. I think maybe you're just a little bit too early. OK. Yeah, that's fair enough, yeah, I take... You think that's fair enough? That's totally fair enough, yeah. And I'm, then I'm going to say that I'm out. This is beautifully made. Thank you. And you've clearly got a really good eye, and I love the one that you're holding as well. But for this to fly, you do need somebody who's constantly in touch with you, constantly yeah. saying this is what the structure of the business needs to be, this is how you need to manage your money, yeah. and I couldn't honestly offer you that level of input. So I wish you all of the best, Thank and you. I will keep my eye open, but I won't be investing, Maury. I'm out. I think you've been brave to come in and pitch a business that you've just started, you've sold a couple of bags, What's credible about it is that you've been really honest and open from the outset. So I say congratulations, really good. You are on a journey, but too early for an investment, so sadly I'm out. Murray, I love the bag, but I don't know anything about fashion. And I think that's the difficulty for me, is not being a spe... If I was a specialist in this industry, you just have an eye. OK. And, you, and maybe that's what you need, is you need an investor from the industry... OK. ..who can really help you set it on fire. So, as much as I love it, I'm going to wish you all the best, but I'm out. Compliments, but no cash, and four dragons are now out. 
Tuka Suleiman is Moray's final hope of securing the money and mentorship her company craves. Normally, I've seen bags made in the UK mm. and they look like they've been made in, in the back street somewhere, but this is very good quality. You. Yeah, so I can My artisan works so there. hard. <laughs> no, no, that could commit excellent quality. But to build a bag brand is very difficult. If you look at the big brands, yeah. most brands have been around for at least 50 years, at least. So, you know, to try and enter that market overnight it's not an easy task. I understand. You understand? I, I had to give it a go. No, and I really commend you for, for having the passion to go for it. OK. So I'm not going to invest today, and I'm out. But what I am willing to do is give you my email address, and you can email me and my team, and we'll help you where we can. OK, thank you so much. I really need that. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Tuka. Thank you, that was so Great. sweet. Thank you. Moray leaves the den without a deal, but she does have a direct line to a fashion industry heavyweight. And for this Hans Christian Andersen superfan, that's still a fairy tale ending. The fact that I went from my bedroom to this, you have no idea how much that means to me. It's surreal. It's what it makes all the hard work feel great. Yeah. Also hoping his hard work would pay off was professional piper Robbie McIsaac, who sent the Dragons a sonic signal he was on his way. <laughs> 21-year-old Robbie had come up with a device to prevent the build-up of a bagpiper's worst enemy, condensation inside the pipes. The solution, the flux blowpipe, which absorbs moisture directly from piper's breath. Deborah Meaden road tested the product. Oh my God, how much do you have to blow? Though she lacked a bit of puff. <laughs> I'm not doing this. <laughs> Somebody else do it. It's not a good look. But Sarah Davies <laughs> was a natural. <laughs> That's my first time playing the bagpipes. Robbie was aiming for the professional piper. And there are over 140,000 competitive bagpipers who are potential customers. And Peter Jones wanted to know just how lucrative that market might be. If you were to sell to everyone, what would that generate in sales for you? Roughly over £12 million. Pounds. And how many of these have you sold so far? 316 units. Deborah Meaden thought she had spotted a red flag in terms of repeat sales. Once you buy one of these, haven't you got it? Yes. So this product should last a lifetime and this is a potential risk for the business. However, the part that actually absorbs the condensation is our special cloth. Is that that? Yes, that's it. This will cost you £10. And how often would you need one of these? Potentially once every two months. Robbie was already working with a big hitter in the bagpipe business. The product is manufactured and distributed by the world's largest bagpipe company. They're based in Kilmarnock in Scotland. But his canniness left the dragons wondering what they could bring to the party. You've done it incredibly well to create a product, get it to market, and even generate sales at, at just 21 years old. So really, really impressive. It does beg the question, what do you really need a dragon for? Because you've got the product, you've got a, a, good, a good partner there. I don't think you need me as an investor, to be honest. And so I'm going to say that I'm out. None of the dragons were prepared to pay the piper, and Robbie departed without a deal. However, Tuka Suleiman had a bit more costume drama in mind. The sound of bagpipes always gives me a little tingle. Peter, upstairs, put your kilt on. I beg your pardon? But you haven't had an invite like that for a long time, Peter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you know when you, you're ready for this, when you feel as though you're prepared? Yeah. Yeah. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> Next to face the dragons are neighbours turned business partners, Max Thorley and Ashley Washington. When I moved into the house and saw Ashley, um, the first thing I said to him is, if you've got an app idea, let me know. 
before I even said hi. Uh, two months later, knock on the door. Yeah, that's how we did it. Yeah. Yeah? Don't worry, dude. Don't worry. I've got you. We're bringing in a business that's it's not really been seen before in the format that it's been done in. I can see a cake with Tuka's face on. I want to eat your face. Eat my face? On a cake. On a what? cake? <laughs> you want to eat his face? Yeah, 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 look. Oh. Right. Gay faces. Hi there, my name's Ashley. And I'm Max. And I'm the CEO and co-founder of Showcult. I'm also the co-founder and CTO. We're here today to pitch for £80,000 for 10% equity in our business. Showcult is a lifestyle super app strictly for independent businesses. And it was created out of my own frustration as a local independent florist trying to compete with major brands in terms of online presence, brand awareness and customer reach. What we've created empowers local retailers by offering them a full service, shopping, delivery, order management, e-ticketing and customer service platform. Yep, so some of our most popular retailers on the app is a, your local fishmongers, florists, wine bar, where we showcase, promote and deliver their products. Another example would be our e-ticketing services, where we sell tickets for local comedy nights, uh, wine tasting evenings and for non-league football clubs. We've just over 22,000 users on our platform. Since our launch in late 2019, we have taken just under 2 million in sales. Out of that 2 million, we've taken just under 200,000 in gross profit. Um, since we're only alive in 20 postcodes, yep. uh, we believe what we've done is, is, is pretty good. All software and operating business model is custom built and is tailored to address the gap we've identified in the marketplace. Um, thanks a lot for listening and we'll do our best to answer any questions that you've got for us. An app which enables local businesses to deliver direct to your door is the proposition from Max Thorley and Ashley Washington. How do you pronounce the name? Uh, show call. It's a play on words of shop local. Shop the... local. OK. The pair are looking for an £80,000 investment in return for a 10% stake in their company. So it's basically a local community marketplace. Yeah. Yeah. Deborah Meaden is first up, so is she impressed by the duo's efforts to date? Can I just say good work? Thank you. Thank you. So who are your nearest competitors? There's, there's, there's several. <laughs> there, uh, there are. Several separate ones, though. Yeah. So there's the, obviously the Deliveroo's, um, the Just no, Eat. The, the, yeah, but they're slightly different. Yeah. Yours is very much focused on those local, yeah. biz, you know, yeah. And, yeah. and that really is the heart of what you're doing. That sets you apart. Yeah. So, so on that, you know, the shop local type. Yeah. Yeah. Platforms. Who are your big competitors? So, uh, one of the closest is a app called Grab, which is based in Singapore. Singapore. That's the closest thing to us. Is it? I mean, there's a lot of shop local platforms, aren't there? Yeah, there's the shopping side, but then is the mixed services side. I think the big one of the big ones with us is because you've got your takeaways and you've got your e-tickets. You can order everything at the, at the same time on us. I'm not aware of uh, yeah. another platform that you can do that on. In a crowded market, Max and Ashley hope that offering a diverse selection of local services can set their app apart. But tech titan Peter Jones wants to further dissect the pair's plans to digitise what's on your doorstep. Do you deliver the product yourself? Yeah, we have, we have local drivers. Yeah. Yeah, self-employed local drivers that do all that. And you're in one town at the moment? When Two. Um, Where's that? Manchester and Liverpool. Yeah, but we've only gone into selected of 20 postcodes because we haven't marketed out yet because we didn't have time yeah. during the pandemic. So how do you make your money? So it's we the... charge a commission to the vendors. So what's your commission? 18%. OK. When you talk about that sort of margin, it limits you to what type of shops you could actually take on because 18% is a lot of money. But in terms of commission, especially with takeaways, where like your deliveries, Ubers are charging 40, we're charging 18. What proportion of your retailers are food takeaways 
And what is shops? Normal 60, retail shops? 60% is takeaways. So the 60% takeaway is mainly because they can afford the margin. Yeah. So you're not really having a very comprehensive selection. You know, if I wanted to do my grocery stores, I wouldn't come to you. Just, just to add to that, so with your, your local gift shops and you start talking about 18% commission, which may seem high, we're also giving them their own um, app to go with it as yeah. well. And, and normally they're trying to get their own apps themselves and their own websites and they don't know how to do it. It costs a lot. So we're taking, we're taking that away from them. Max and Ashley believe their platform offers retailers a range of potential benefits. But it's the duo's own pathway to growth that's concerning Stephen Bartlett. How much money are you going to have to raise to make this a national success? We think about two million. I think there's a chance it could be nearer 200 million. Wow. If you look at any, anyone else in the market yeah. that's achieved national dominance in this space, and think about how much they've raised. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. So what's 80K going to do? So that'll get us um, a good foothold in, um, in Manchester and Liverpool, yeah. really, really digging down in the marketing. It's also going to... 80K? 80K, yeah. yeah. Manchester and Liverpool for 80K. Yeah, yeah. more so Manchester, because Liverpool is... Liverpool's, Liverpool's just, we're at the start of the journey in Liverpool, so yeah. um, Manchester, we're hoping for 80K, will get us a good foothold in Manchester. And uh, Liverpool, it'll, it'll, we're going with Liverpool, so. And I think just just because we're just we're just two guys that started it, yeah. and we've managed to do over this the with, garden fence. Uh, yeah, yeah. You've done you've done good. I can't knock you. However, you're bringing a spud gun to a nuclear war here. Had you started back in those Just Eat days, maybe just over 10 years ago, yeah. mm. there wasn't the same saturation as it relates to marketing and user acquisition. Yep. Now it's harder than it's ever been. And there are companies all over and they've come, raised huge money and they've fallen one yep. by one because of how competitive this space is. We've not failed. It's we're just because we're, we're succeeding. We're, we're, not... we're succeeding as it stands now. Yeah. I'm passionate, I, I applaud you. I'm passionate but... about this. I'm sure you are. I yeah. applaud you for your effort. But in this case, when I think about the risk and what it's going to take to win this war, I just can't see it in this business. So thank you, but I'm out. Amidst fears they'll be financially outgunned, Max and Ashley have lost their first dragon. Is Peter Jones prepared to add the Pairs app to his extensive technology portfolio? Guys, you couldn't have got a better picture from Steve, what Stephen said. This business is going to need many, many millions. Yeah. yeah. If you came in here and said, we've done something that's quite genius from literally the back of my house, we're going to help every single independent retailer that is really struggling. But for that, Dragons, I'm offering 10% of my company and all I want to raise is £10,000 today. And I can tell you, had you done that, I would have come in because I like impossible challenges. But to spend £80,000 as an investment knowing that you're going to need millions to have yeah. a chance, it just is a step too far, guys. So sadly, I'm out. Do you know what? I, I, I absolutely love you two. And if, if this was a small business that was you two going in full time and then me coming on board as a dragon to try and help you move that along to the next level, I would be really excited to do that. However, I feel like what it is, is it's that for a little while mm -hmm. and then quite quickly, it would need to progress on to becoming a beast. Yeah and a beast that requires rounds of funding and therefore yep. dilution, and that beast, I, I don't love. So I won't be investing in a mouse. Thank you. Thanks for the nice words, thank you. So I feel like one of your major drivers for success at the moment is that you're not one of the big guys who are charging huge margins. That's right, yeah. The problem is, as you get bigger, you're gonna struggle to make money. And that's why you see these big guys who really know what they're doing. You know, they're not, yeah, they're, yeah. they've honed it down. They know what they're doing. They still have to charge pretty hefty commissions because they have got infrastructure to support this really good service that they deliver. So I see a little bit of a tension in the market that you are operating in, as in the local markets, yeah. you know, who yeah. are going to love you 
versus a service that you're going to need to deliver to take over the world. And I actually think you'll find your way around this, and I think you will earn yourselves a really nice income. Do I think it's going to give me a return on my investment that I would expect or want? I honestly don't. So I'm afraid I'm going to say those two words. I'm out. Thank you. Four dragons have now discounted the deal. Few understand retail better than Tuka Suleiman. So is he sold on Max and Ashley's plans to take the high street high tech? Guys, I'm, I'm on the fence. I'll be honest with you, I think you've got the beginning of something, but I don't think you've got a real strategy. And I think you will struggle with a lot of retailers because of the margin. And I think the 80,000 is a drop in the ocean. And within a few months, you're going to say to me, Tuka, where can we raise 5 million? Where can we raise 10 million? I think if we handle this correctly, and with a dragon's help, this could be huge. It would be the best decision you ever made. Oh, we, we work hard. <laughs> we work, we work very hard. <laughs> 20 postcodes, £2 million. Pound. OK, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll make you an offer. I'll give you all of the money, but I want 30%. I think we're going to say those yeah. words. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, cheers. Well done. Thank you. Why are you yeah. running away so quick? <laughs> <laughs> Talking to the wall. Talking to the wall. Oh, I thought you'd accepted. No, no, sorry. Talk, talking to the wall. I thought, actually, we, we got this right. Let's get out of here before he changes his mind. <laughs> to the wall, sorry. <laughs> Max and Ashley's persuasive line in patter has teased an offer out of Tuka Suleiman. But Peter Jones is a bit previous in the belief that this is already a done deal. What do you reckon? Laying hands on the £80,000 they were seeking... No. No? No. ..means parting with three times more equity than the 10% they wanted to give away. Do you reckon? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. OK. Will the duo try for better terms? How fast do you want your money back? I don't think you would give it to me very fast. OK. <laughs> I mean... If we did in 18 months, would there be a percentage decrease maybe there? Look, if you gave me my money in 18 months, I'd reduce it down to 20. And on that, we'll, we'll yeah. accept that. Great. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I've been looking forward well, to working with you guys. Thank you. Thank well you. Done. Uh, and um, <laughs> help yourself to anything you see on the table. Well, I'm taking Tuka's face home on a cake. <laughs> Thank you. Max and Ashley have done it. They leave the den with £80,000 <laughs> and the backing of a dragon for whom building successful businesses is a piece of cake. You're definitely the best looking dragon on a cake, Tuka. How does he taste? He don't taste so good. <laughs> we are going to save the high street. Hoo-wee! Last into the den is young entrepreneur Miles Dickinson Brown. I only 18, so I think people overlook that. They think he's only 18, he, you know, he's too young. But the reason I created this business was a unique gap in the market for a designer item and something that's customised as well. While he might lack experience, Miles has no shortage of ambition. Maybe one day I could be the dragon investor in other businesses. I'm the upcoming generation. Hello, Dragons. My name is Miles Dickinson Brown, founder of Hayes Cards. I'm asking for £35,000 for a 35% stake in my company. Hayes Cards is a luxury brand that creates custom metal credit and debit cards straight to the consumer. On our online website portal, customers can design and upload images to engrave on their card. If, like many, you're struck for ideas, we have 70 plus designs pre made to choose from. Since launching in September, we have generated over £124,000 in revenue, with a gross profit of 56000 and a net profit of 30000 
Sorry. With your investment, I'd like to increase our social media marketing budget, as well as bring new cards to market. Thank you very much for your time, and if you could open your boxes to your custom engraved cards. Personalised debit and credit cards are the offering from Miles Dickinson Brown. Oh, our own. Who's seeking £35,000 in return for a 35% share in his business. How tall are you? Six or four. How old? 18. The entrepreneur himself has already made an impression on the Dragons, but has his pitch proved similarly impactful? So that was a short, sweet and very Sorry punchy presentation. No, uh, I, I like I'd like that. I'd like to get to the point. Absolutely right. So tell me about these. So you pick from one of our amazing designs from our website. You then freeze your card and send it to us within 24 hours. We will then remove the chip and pin and scan all the data straight onto your new debit card, metal credit card you've chosen. So can I just check, Miles? I'll send you my credit card. Yeah. You'll take the chip out and mm -hmm. put it in. And what about the strip? How do you...? So the strip is... Um, I explain it like a, a USB stick. You just swipe it across like that. Data is just transferred. It's, it's almost like connecting one device to the other. It just goes across. OK. So if I wanted to have one done, which, in fact, you've made one for me, what would it cost? So it costs £74.99. So you're selling through a website at the moment? Correct, yes. And what's your daily income yeah, looking like? Yeah, so it varies. Um, we're very social media based. Some days we could do, you know, 30 cards in a day. Some days it's only two cards. You know, it's, it heavily varies on our TikTok and our Instagram socials. What does it cost you to produce? So it costs £7.50. But what kit have you had to buy yeah. to do that? So to start this, I've had to invest £5,000 of my own money, a laser engraver, as well as uh, testing different prototypes and, obviously, the boxes and the cars itself. And what's your capacity? You know, say this went wild, how many of these can, could you produce in a day? We could produce... It, if I show you how fast it does it, it, it is done in a few seconds. The laser zaps it and we're done and ready through. Thank you. A product that's speedy to make and offers healthy margins is music to a dragon's ears. Now, Sarah Davies wants to find out more about the teenager turned trader. So, are you still in school at the moment doing your A-levels? No, I've just finished my A-levels. Just finished. And are you going off to uni or is this you full-time uh, in the business? I am full-time in the business, but we'll have to see what happens, really. And you've done 124 grand in revenue. Yeah. With five grand start, where did you get the five grand from? So when I was younger, um, I was buying and selling things on eBay. And then, yeah, I just kept doing that. And I knew that it would get to a point where I couldn't scale it as much. So I was like, well, halt it for a second, do your GCSEs, and then we'll uh, see where we go. And then I came up with the idea. Something that I really want to scale. I am very impressed. Thank you very much. That you've clearly got entrepreneurialism in your bones. I hope so, yeah. Is it is that upbringing? Is that genetic? What do you yeah, think? Yeah. Uh, so my dad, he runs a mortgage business. No qualifications. Um, made his own way. And then my granddad's on TV. What your does your granddad do on TV? He does uh, Dickinson's Real Deal. What does he do? There? He's on Dickinson's Real Deal. But as what? As a. Uh, it's an uh, antiques program on ITV. No, I know. But what's his role? Or... Oh, he's a TV presenter. He's. I'm going to guess he's David the Dickinson. Dick David Dickinson. He's he? David Dickinson. Yeah. Wow. He's really good. He's all right. Yeah. Despite his family background, Miles is clearly no antique. But does Stephen Bartlett believe his business could be a real Bobby Dazzler? I'm a sucker for this stuff. Yeah. I am the target customer of this kind of product because when, whenever Revolut pop up with any kind of personalised card, I've bought all of them. And those challenger banks, a lot of them now, Revolut, Monzo, Starling, they're all allowing increased personalization of your debit card. Mm. I can put emojis on mine now. I think I can write something on mine now. So do you see that as being a main threat to this business? I don't see it as a threat. I see it as a, another avenue. You could never do any of the designs we do here on those cards. With our cards, we can put them, as you can see here, the uh, numbers on the front or the back. You know, it's fully customizable. You can drag and drop where you want your um, account number to be, expiry, things like that. Give me an idea of the scale. How big could this get? It could be huge. We have the capacity to do maybe 
15, 20 cars a day at the moment. Um, but once we have more machines and we have more funding, we could go, we could go global. Miles has ambitious plans to scale up production. So will Sarah Davies be willing to bankroll them? I think you are an outstanding young entrepreneur. And I think you are going to make waves. I'm not convinced it's with this business. OK. Obviously, as you know, I'm in the craft industry. Yeah. And this laser engraving is a huge trend in our industry at the moment. Yeah. And the machines to do it are fairly readily available. Mm -hmm. So the big thing for me was understanding the technology around the um, magnetised strip. And when you explained that that wasn't really that technical, I realised that the barrier to entry to do this isn't that great. So I want to commend the ingenuity, but I don't want to invest today, so I'm out. A blow for Miles, who has lost his first dragon. Deborah Meaden praised his pitch, but will that initial enthusiasm lead to a deal? So I think you you are you 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 you've got it. You've got what it takes. You're going to be successful in life, and you can I can just feel it. And I think you've come up with a really cool idea, and I think you will make some good money out of it yourself. I don't think necessarily an investor will, because I think it is a short-term idea. It'll go like that, it'll do really well, yeah. and it'll drop off. Yeah. I'm not convinced that this has got the length of life in it, and I don't think an investor will make a great sum of money out of it. So uh, I wish you, or genuinely wish you all the best, but I'm out. I think this is a, this is a very good starter business because at the moment it's a great idea and it's fantastic, but there's nothing unique and there might need to be a little bit of thought about what is that differentiated offering, but I think I could really help you take this to a huge level. So I'm going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all of the money mm -hmm. for 35% of the business, exactly what you've asked for. Thank you very much. And that's how fair I think you've been. I think you've, you've nailed it. Thank you. An offer for Miles, and unusually at exactly the level of equity he asked for. Will either of the two remaining dragons be tempted to try and muscle in on the deal? Miles, I think you're a really impressive young man. But what I think you need as a young man in business is you need a, a partner and a mentor that's going to be able to open doors for you and stop you making the mistakes that you're likely to make when you're young and you don't, you don't know what the unknown unknowns are. So I'm going to make you an offer as well. Thank you very much. Because you tick all the boxes and I think this is a business that couldn't be more suited to me. So I'm going to do the 35,000 at 35% as well. Because I think that's fair. I'll tell you what, you are very impressive. Thank you very much. What I like about you is you're still very cool about it. Yeah, you've got to be. And I think you're going to go places. This, this won't be your only business, I'm sure. But, um, but you need a mentor, and that's me. I'm going to give you 35,000 for 35% mm -hmm. plus Tuka time. OK, can I go and talk to the wall, please? Yeah, please, because I'm so honoured that they just have to copy me. <laughs> Miles has three rival bids to consider, all offering the £35,000 he was originally seeking in return for the 35% equity he was happy to give away. The young entrepreneur must make a difficult decision. Um, I have a question for all of you. What do you think, mentorship-wise, you can bring to the table in terms of, obviously, you're all very experienced, you've been in business longer than I've probably been alive, majority of you. What would you, can you give to an 18-year-old like me? Time. Pick up the phone to a dragon mm -hmm. who's got a team behind him, who, who's going to support you 24-7. Yeah. Time is what you're going to get from me. Nobody has mentored, helped and assisted more young people in Britain than me. Mm -hmm. I will give you access to a whole team of individuals that will open up 
more opportunities than you can potentially cope with. Yeah. So I think the support can definitely be there. Some great offers, you know, pick up the phone, advice from his team and support there. I'm going to go one step further. You can come and work in my office with me and my team. I've got two girls in my team who are TikTok experts that work two foot from my desk. You need to be around that group well, of people. Well, they need to work harder because I've I've done one video on TikTok and you still haven't matched me on views. Yes, I have. I've yeah. got, I've got. <laughs> Guys, please. If please I, my, my, my 50th video has got 2.6 million views. Okay. He's so, done one video and I've got 2.6, okay, just so, saying. So, and, and I had to show him last night how to use TikTok. So, um, going back. about popularity though. Going back to my, going back Miles, to my point. Can you imagine working with these two? Can you Sorry, imagine? Tuka. That, that Miles, Miles. Working with any of those two. Miles. You want somebody who's solid. Tuka, I let you speak. So, Tuka, Tuka, let me finish <laughs> answer my question. I'm the guy for this business. And Miles, just think about it. Look at the guy that's delivered more success than anybody. Not talking about it, but yeah. delivering it. Stephen, I'd like to set you off a... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get two metres apart, but we'll do a virtual handshake. Thank, Thank you, Miles. Thank you, Miles. Success for Miles. You'll learn how to make good decisions later on in life. <laughs> Who leaves the den with £35,000 and the backing of a dragon whose experience equals extra credit in the bank. I feel great, ecstatic. With Stephen on board, it'll help loads with mentorship and bringing confidence to myself, really, as well. It's tough as an 18-year-old trying to establish something. He's impressive. I was so tempted to almost try and get a deal where I got first refusal in his next business. That's why we should stay in contact, because I'll invest in his next business. <laughs> So, one of the den's youngest ever entrepreneurs seals a deal with its youngest ever dragon. Compelling evidence that in the world of business, age is no barrier to success. Next time. Are you hunting for food? Right, but that's going to shut you up for a good while, isn't it? You hope so. When you told me your story, I just, it just hit me right in my feels. I don't even own a dog. Going forward, how could you see it could make money? I don't know. I have no idea. Your pitch today was bloody awful. You're right. That's why we're here today, to seek your expertise. What, you want a magic wand to make you profitable? <laughs> <laughs>